Welcome to EDCI 555 Final Project, Digital Citizenship by Jessica Clark. By March 23rd of 2020, over 1.38 billion students had been affected by COVID school closures. Because of this, schools across the world turned to technology as go-to alternatives to in-person education. For students who may have not had access to technology at school or in their homes before, suddenly technology was an ever-present aspect of everyday life leading to a new way of acting and behaving towards others in a new digital environment. Since COVID, schools, administrators, teachers, and students have come to rely on technology as the main source for almost every aspect of the modern educational system. Because of this, it is important to consider how long this term use of technology will be implemented in the classroom and how expectations of technology use will be communicated with students. If technology is here to stay, then we must offer our students the proper guidelines for the use of this privilege. According to the U.S. Institute of Diplomacy and Human Rights, digital citizenship is a way of teaching adults and students how to engage and participate in the responsible and safe use of technology. Without instruction, students will remain unaware that there are safe and responsible ways to act when using technology or engaging in online social activities. Therefore, the classroom becomes the perfect place to provide this instruction, as the classroom has become one of the primary locations for technology use among students. The nine elements of digital citizenship, as created by ISTE and Mike Ribble, provide a succinct framework for educators looking to provide instruction on digital citizenship. Each of the nine elements can be viewed through the SC3 framework, three levels of support that educators can use when creating a digital citizenship curriculum. The nine elements are as follows, digital access, digital commerce, digital communication and collaboration, digital etiquette, digital fluency, digital health and welfare, digital law, digital right and responsibilities, digital security and privacy. The S3 framework is as follows, each of the nine elements can be framed in one of the three levels of support, safe, protecting digital citizens, savvy, creating educated digital citizens, and social, respecting yourself as a digital citizen. The nine elements of digital citizenship and the S3 framework can be combined together to provide a comprehensive educational tool that is referred to as the Digital Citizenship Nine Elements Progression Chart. This progression chart walks educators through each one of the nine elements and shows how each one applies to different grade bands supported by the S3 framework of safe, savvy, and social. It also shows which of the nine elements relate to each other at each stage of the progression. As an additional bonus, the progression charts offer insights into which curriculum standards each element relates to, providing teachers with an effortless way to incorporate digital citizenship into a standards-based grading system. Furthermore, potential lesson plan resources are offered alongside various element progressions that are taken from the Digital Citizenship Handbook for School Leaders, Fostering Positive Interactions Online by Mike Ribble and Marty Park. Digital citizenship can start at any age, but the best time to start the education process is as soon as a student can hold a digital device. Just like we should teach our kids and students the proper ways to manage their personal conduct in the physical world, Teaching students how to manage their online and digital presence is essential as well. Students need to know that whatever they do in the digital world, they leave a digital footprint behind. There are many resources available online that can help teachers and parents find a great place to start educating students and family members about digital citizenship. A few such resources include Common Sense Media Digital Passport. This is a website. The passport is for grades three through five. It teaches digital citizenship through gamification. You can earn a passport through games, videos, and modules that take children through the nine elements of digital citizenship. Common Sense Media Digital Compass. This is a choose your own adventure game for grades six through eight and works much the same as the digital media passport. Digital Citizenship app is designed by learning.com. It has a wide range of um, opportunities for ages starting at middle school. They include videos, games, and quizzes, and topics such as online safety, cyberbullying, ethical use of online content, and much more. Cyberwise.org is a wonderful resource for digital citizenship tools for educators and parents. It includes podcasts, presentations, etc. 
It is a great hub for lesson plans and teaching resources as well. The debate over the use of digital devices and online communities offers a long list of pros and cons. A brief look at both sides is enough to highlight the need for digital citizenship education. Whether pros or cons, everyone needs to learn how to manage themselves appropriately when using technology. Digital citizenship and the S3 framework provide an outline for how to manage the use of technology and digital media in a positive and healthy way. Some pros include easy to access information, Social networks provide opportunities to meet new people, online learning opportunities, easy access to online entertainment, entertainment and learning opportunities for all ages, and more efficiency for online commerce. Cons on the flip side are not all information is true. Social networks provide opportunities for cyberbullying, multiple distractions from learning online and in person, easy access to online entertainment as a distraction, mature content that cannot always be regulated, and without proper security measures, personal and financial information is at risk. Because UDL often incorporates the use of technology in an effort to reduce barriers to learning, students will benefit from understanding how the nine elements of digital citizenship can work to support the UDL framework. The diagram on the left shows that the nine elements of digital citizenship can be divided into three separate categories, respect for self and others, educating self and others, and protecting self and others, that blend seamlessly with the three principles of the UDL framework, engagement, representation, and action and expression. As students learn what is expected of them as a digital citizen, they will better benefit from the flexible UDL digital environment because they will have the knowledge and skills needed to use the technological enhancements fluently and respectfully. With a strong digital citizenship background, students will also understand that the flexibility of a UDL learning opportunity also comes with the responsibility to respect self and others, educate self and others, and protect self and others when using technology. The digital citizenship progression chart referred to on slide six and showcased in the Digital Citizenship Handbook for School Leaders by Mike Ribble and Marty Park offers a succinct outline of the nine elements of digital citizenship and how they apply across grade bands and common core content standards. When teachers are looking for digital enhancements to add to their curriculum, they can rely on the triple E framework to help them choose different resources. By pairing the digital citizenship progression chart with the triple E framework, Teachers can get a better understanding of what digital resources to look for that will extend learning, enhance learning, and engage the learner, while at the same time know how to appropriately instruct their students on the proper use of these digital tools according to the safe, savvy, and social guiding principles of the digital citizenship framework. In order for a teacher to effectively guide students towards becoming exceptional digital citizens, he or she must have a firm understanding of how digital citizenship works and how to weave the nine elements of digital citizenship into every aspect of technology use. The TPAC framework illustrates the types of knowledge a teacher must have to be an effective leader of digital citizenship. Technological knowledge, an understanding of how the chosen technology works, content knowledge, an understanding of the curriculum material, and pedagogical knowledge, an understanding of how students learn and the best practices for conveying knowledge. Because each of these three areas overlap to create more specific knowledge bases, it is important for teachers to be ever more aware of how technology factors into content and pedagogy in the classroom. The nine elements of digital citizenship add, uh, adds another layer of understanding that a teacher has to have at their fingertips. The most relevant areas of the TPAC framework relating to digital citizenship are technological pedagogical knowledge, technological knowledge, and technological content knowledge. While these nine elements add another layer of understanding, they also provide a new lens through which to view the TPAC framework. How will I, as the teacher, weave digital literacy into my use of pedagogy, content, and technology? If we are trying to reach the sweet spot of the TPAC framework within our classrooms, then teachers must be digitally literate and be ready to teach our students how to be digitally literate as well. For a deeper dive into how to weave digital citizenship into the TPAC framework, the Digital Citizenship Handbook for Social Leaders, Fostering Positive Interactions Online by Mike Ribble and Marty Park, along with the Digital Citizenship Progression Chart, offers several strategies for teachers looking to develop a deeper understanding of implementing digital literacy into their classrooms. Through the S3 support system of safe, savvy, and social, 
teachers can develop TPAC plans at three different levels depending on the digital fluency of their students. Thank you for participating in this presentation of digital citizenship and why we need it in our classrooms. For references used in this presentation, please see the next two slides.